Empathy versus sympathy. At this point, I'm sure you've heard of both, but is one better than the other? Should we have both? We are gonna get into it right now. Hey, hey everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Keandra Jackson Show. I am licensed marriage and family therapist, Keandra Jackson, your amazing host for today. I remember in the early days when I was in school, like elementary, we used to talk about sympathy a lot. It was like sympathy, have sympathy, sympathy, sympathy. But then as we got older, and of course being a licensed therapist and being in the mental health space, Empathy has become a huge thing that so many of us need to understand and incorporate. But I had this thought. Sometimes we think empathy is better than sympathy, but there's a whole bunch of time where both is required and needed. To give you a quick and dirty version, empathy is the ability to understand the thoughts and feelings of another person. But the key to empathy is literally putting yourself in the other person's shoes and trying to experience their world from their perspective. While on the other hand, sympathy is feeling pity or sorrow for another person based on their misfortune. So sympathy acknowledges and expresses the concern of the other person, but it doesn't necessarily mean they express the full emotional experience of what the other person is going through. So while I'm all for empathy, sympathy has a role too that we need to talk about and break down. Let's use a very real example that so many of us have experienced before. I think almost any and everybody watching this video has experienced some type of death or loss in their life. It could be a person, a place, a thing, a pet, idea, a business, whatever. You've experienced the death of something or a loss of a thing. So we all know that dealing with grief and loss is not a linear process. I'm not going to get into too much of it here, but there is this thing called the five stages of grief. So that means that you can go through all of these different stages and backtrack and go back and move forward and then regress and then because healing is not linear. So for example, someone's mother passes away. Empathy says, wow, I feel so sad thinking about what this person is going through. If I would have lost my mother at this age and went through the sickness that she experienced, I would feel so sad and so despondent. I can't even imagine how I would feel if something like that happened to me. I love my mom. I can't see life without her. It must be heartbreaking to experience something like this. Empathy does that. It shares the person's pain. You're putting yourself in their situation and saying, whoa, if this happened to me, I don't know how I will be able to manage and process. Sympathy does something a little bit different, but it does something that we actually need too. So sympathy expresses thoughts, condolences, and feelings. We do this all the time when someone passes away, a celebrity or someone we know, we say, oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. I'm sending you my condolences. That's acknowledging that the situation is difficult, but it's not putting yourself in that person's shoes. If you think about it, when you go to CVS and all of these stores, they have sympathy cards with a S, sympathy, not empathy cards. And maybe that's actually a good business idea. Maybe we should have empathy cards and not just sympathy cards too. Huh, I'll put that in my back pocket for later. Don't try to steal it. I'll give you guys another real life example where this happened to me. I was recently a guest expert on a true crime documentary where I was breaking down some real life cases of some murders and some things that were just wild and wacky that people have gone through. I was giving my perspective from a mental health and a relationship lens without giving y'all too much of it because y'all need to go and watch it on Tubi. If you search love you to death, you will see the whole series of mommy's missing playbook for murder for love of money. These are all shows that I was on. There was one episode in particular called mommy's missing and it is filled with so many plot twists and turns. But one thing that happened was the mother was murdered and also the children died as well. I'm not gonna tell y'all how, just in case you wanna go watch it. But as I was going through this case, I started thinking about, whoa, the grandparents, not only did their child get murdered, but also their grandchildren died as well. So thinking about you having one major loss, losing your child, and then you have another major loss, losing your grandchildren shortly after. When I tell you that I was almost tearing up, I was literally almost about to cry because I put myself in the grandparents' shoes to say, whoa, if I lost a child, that's hard. 
but also too thinking like, okay, I still have my grandchildren. I can still have a legacy from my daughter through them. I can see them growing up and I can still see bits and pieces of my daughter in them. But for that to be taken away from you too, it was heart wrenching. That's empathy because I was like, whoa, I can't even imagine that this is somebody's real life and what they're going through and this is their reality and they have to deal with this every day for the rest of their life. And unfortunately, the case was never solved. So now they're gonna have all of these shoulda, coulda, woulda and wonders in their head forever. Sympathy would have been like, oh, wow, that sucks that that happened to them. You know, my condolences, so sorry for your loss and I would have moved on about my way.